Hello Makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. Now this week I want to deal with something that is a challenge to me and to a lot of artists and that is uh, forgetting what I was doing. So here's the challenge. Recently going through my studio and finding one of my paintbrush washing cups. You know, something that looks uh, not unlike this mason jar that I commonly use. And you know what? I forgot to take the brushes out and everything dried. I think this one's actually still stuck to the bottom. So I've ended up with this delightful assortment of paintbrushes that are, these are actually all fused together. There are three of them there. Uh, this one's a, I don't know if you can see that. That's that's not an angle that is uh, that is normal for a paintbrush. That's, that's bad. So yeah, I've got a lot of dried paint in here and I'll be honest, it's not the first time I forgot what I was doing and left a paintbrush sitting on top of something while I finish something else up only to forget about it and then eventually you just kind of toss it in the trash because what can you do with a dried up paintbrush? Well today that's what I want to focus on is what can we do to revitalize these paintbrushes when there's a possibility that maybe uh, they don't have to be thrown away and we can use them for another day. So I want to try a, a, basically an experiment. I want to try a few different methodologies on how we might revitalize these guys right here. Now to begin with, I have uh, I have just two small glasses, just short glasses here. I don't know, parfait. I think they were a dessert parfait thing. I'm like, hey, those will be useful in the future. Because, you know, if you're an artist, you're kind of a hoarder too, it turns out. I know, weird. Uh, but it allows you to say, what can I do now that I have these? And I'm going to try two different products. One that you're already very familiar with, most likely in some part of your life. And that is isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Now again, this is a solvent. It can be used to break down a lot of things. And I'm going to just come in here. And let's just get, uh, let's get this about halfway full of the isopropyl alcohol. And by the way, uh, please recall that this is a flammable uh, fluid. So you don't want to do anything around a flame or smoking or whatever, whatever you might be doing that uh, requires fire. Don't do that. Now for the other one, I'm going to fill it up with uh, Murphy's Oil Soap. Now this is a special concentrated wood cleaner. And hopefully this will do the trick as well. But again, this is a solvent based and a gentle solvent at that. But we're going to... Do something very similar here. Let me just get this filled up uh, again about halfway. That's a very viscous liquid there. Now the objective is to, yeah, we're going to have to take our brushes, put them in the, the, uh, the required substances here, and then it's just a matter of waiting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for a couple of hours. I'll come back and show you what the results are going to be. Welcome back. Now our Brushes have had an opportunity to sit in their various solutions for a couple of hours now and I wanted to come and explore this and just to kind of share with their Murphy's oil soap uh, It's gotten very cloudy. There's some strings of, uh, of definite pigment in here And I think uh, by the time these dried out black was the primary color in here So it's become a little bit more challenging within the alcohol. It has turned kind of a big pink color of sorts and uh, But again the bristles look like they've revitalized which was the thing these are very stiff and frankly, nothing was going to be uh, used to, to, to paint with these ever again. But if we take them out, and uh, it's, it's very uh, viscous, gooey. But if I grab a piece of paper towel here and uh, kind of wipe some stuff off, it is pulling paint off of the casing around the brush as well as the brush. Now, it may, might need to take a few dips in here to, uh, to really make this work. But I'm, I'm starting to see uh, the brush is coming back beautifully and I suppose if I run this through some water I can get a little bit closer. Now one of the things by the way I will mention and I've mentioned this in a previous video is that you don't want to soak your brushes in water for a long period of time like this brush and I don't know if you can see that very well but there's a huge split running down the wood because this wood at some point expanded so dramatically that it basically just busted itself. So uh, yeah this is probably not not long for this world anyway because uh, uh, the paintbrush will fall off before long. But anyway, the point simply is we can revitalize the bristles. And especially when we're dealing with some of the smaller, I have a, a pointing brush, which I bought specially uh, so I would be able to do this and be very disappointed if I lost that. And look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, the point has come back beautifully. All the dried paint uh, has left it. Again, I need to run these through some water to get a little bit more refined. And uh, the same thing with this, uh, just this tiny brush. This tiny brush is giving us... Uh, it's, it's back. It's back. It's ready to do it. And I can clean off, again, some of the gunk. So, you know, mea culpa. Uh, yeah, don't leave your brushes sitting in a thing of water for a couple of weeks because it's not going to do them any good. And once the water evaporates, even worse. Now, that's uh, working with the Murphy's Oil Soap. And by the way, what a great tip. That's a great thing to know about. How about the rubbing alcohol? And uh, again, similar kind of thing. Let me get a fresh piece of paper towel to 
play around with here. And as I pull this out, again, a similar type of thing. This brush uh, has got a split in it because it was sitting in water for too long. But if I come in here, you can start to see again that I'm able to get some of the broken down paint out of the brush. It's really coming off into my paper towel, which is fantastic news. Because more in the paper towel means less in the brush itself. And uh, it's probably going to need a little bit of scrubbing with water, but uh, I've got full flexibility, uh, which this did not have before. Not even, not even close. And this one here, well, let's see, oh, that's still, again, there's still a fair amount of pigment in the brush, but as I kind of work it through. So I would uh, say, in, in honest assessment of what I'm seeing here, that they both did a, a, a fairly sufficient job. It seems to me like the Murphy's Oil Soap may have done a deeper clean. Um, but both of them have brought the brushes back to life, which is what my overall objective. And remember, we had our, our very weirdly bent brush. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it still seems to be a little bent, if we're being honest, but I can probably repoint that and be able to... There we go. That looks a lot better. It looks more like a paintbrush now and uh, less like what it looked like. Now, by the way, I have heard people say that uh, once you uh, are trying to revitalize your brushes like this, that sometimes being able to use a, a soap like a laundry detergent or a fabric softener can really help to get into the bristles, almost like conditioning your hair. Not that, not that I have any idea what that means, uh, but an opportunity to make these bristles better in the future. So I need to go put these through, uh, through the faucet a little bit and make sure that they get cleaned out, but maybe follow up with a little, little bit of soak in something that will really help to revitalize them would be perfect. But the good news is, these brushes, which were destined for the garbage can, are now going back into my, uh, into my collection of goodies. And uh, I can use these for a future project. So, really happy about that. Anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you today. I hope you found this interesting and useful for your own stuff. And again, we all leave a paintbrush to dry whether we want to or not. It's nice to know that we don't have to necessarily toss it right away. This seems to do the trick. If you liked what you saw today, please hit that like button. It really helps us out an awful lot. If you like what we're talking about with uh, working with art supplies and mixed media materials, then uh, we do this every week. Every Friday morning, I'll drop a video for you. And it's always my pleasure to be able to share this content with you. So if you like what we're doing, hit that subscribe button and we'll take it from there. Anyway, that's all I have to share with you this week. Thanks so much for dropping by and I'll see you real soon.